Hello, third and second graders. This is part two of our Northwest Pacific totem pole drawings. So far, you should have all of your animals drawn and you continue to outline all the pencil lines in Sharpie. After you have all these outlined in Sharpie, the next step is going to be using Mr. Sketch Markers to fill them in with color. Now, I know I normally don't say use any kind of markers to color with, but today is going to be special. We're going to use the Mr. Sketch markers to fill in the small areas and shapes on our totem poles to make them bright and colorful. Traditionally, totem pole figures are not always the same color that the animals are in real life, but you want to include some of the same colors so we know what the animal is. For instance, maybe my alligator is going to have a green body, but maybe he'll have orange teeth or some kind of detail um, that's a brighter color or the shapes on the body might be a different color than they would be in the real world. Because like I said earlier, these are abstract drawings of animals that we are using for our totem pole characters. So as I go along and I'm almost done, after I'm done tracing everything in Sharpie, the next step is going to be to erase any of those pencil lines, unneeded pencil lines that I have on my totem pole. Just one more character to outline after I finish these scales on my gator. I don't know if you noticed that when I did my drawing, I tried to keep my shapes as close to the edge of the paper so it looks like they were all carved out of the same trunk of a tree. Um, definitely take your time. I'm actually kind of rushing and that's why it's not as neat as I probably could make it. But I want you guys to have plenty of time to work on this yourself. That's why I'm moving along kind of fast. Now a quick run over with my eraser to make sure I get all those pencil lines out of there. The best that I can. Some I may have pressed too hard and they don't want to erase. But I'm just gonna try and do the best I can to get what I can erased. And now it's time to get your Mr. Sketch Markers. And like I said, for some of the um, colors on my owl, maybe I want to use brown. I know that's more traditional for um, an owl, but then I'm going to use some colors that I wouldn't normally use for an owl. Maybe I want to do the brown on the face, and maybe I'll do the brown around in between these shapes right here. But then I'm going to go in with some other bright colors. Take your time when you're coloring with the markers because you can't erase it. It's there once you have it on the paper, it's there for good. If you do make a mistake when you're coloring, no worries. Consider it a beautiful oops and find a way to turn it into something new. I'm doing my wings. So I'm leaving all the shapes to be colored in with bright colors. If you go outside the lines just a little bit, no worries, we will be trimming these and cutting these out later on. So now I'm gonna go in with some different colors like red. And in there with some orange and yellow. I'm gonna do some orange eyes. And I'm gonna get some pink. And then I think I'll make this area around the center of my eyes yellow and this area around here yellow. And then I'm moving on to my gator. So I might 
start with a color that a gator is and then use some other colors to add accents. I think I'm going to make his teeth pink to make it a little bit different. I am gonna go ahead and do his body green. And then moving on to my bear, I've got my orange out, so I may as well use a little bit of the orange right now. Go in with a little brown. And then I think I'm gonna go in with some more colors on my eyes. So my characters are starting to get pretty colorful. green in between all the shapes and then do all the shapes from the colors. So there is my finished turtle. The next step is to trim this out. And notice I'm gonna trim along the edges, but I don't want to separate my creatures. I want those characters to stay connected. So you might see me kind of trim in here, but then I'm gonna go back out and trim around the body. I want them to be connected. And the little white spaces between the characters, we can fill in with some color once we're done cutting it out. that white put those in the recycle bin now I have these little areas in between I'm just going to go ahead and fill them in with some different bright colors so now the totem pole is completely colored in and cut out the next step will be to create a background for your totem pole and this is when the handout 
for the Native American dwellings will come into play. Um, we're going to think about what kind of Native American dwellings we might see by a totem pole. Something I don't think we'd probably see very often is the adobe or the pueblo because the pueblo homes, they tend to um, be in, a, in <clears throat> like New Mexico, Arizona, in, um, the, in the south. So we're looking more in the north, in the northwest Pacific, where you might see things more like the... Um, wigwams or maybe even the igloos or the uh, northwest coast multifamily plank house or you can look for the ones they say northwest on them as well but if you want to try one of the other dwellings you can go for it but we're going to create a background to put in our picture and then we're going to create a a spot for our totem pole. So when you're wherever you put your dwelling, put it off to the side so that way you'll have a space to glue in your totem pole when you're completely finished. I'm going to show you an example of the one I did right here. Okay, so boys and girls, this is what we're going to be creating today. Um, uh, this is part two. Let's start by uh, completing our totem pole and then you can work on your backgrounds last. Um, you can use the picture to guide you. Don't forget to, after creating your dwelling space, don't forget to add a horizon line and a background, a sky and foreground, middle ground and background details, just like when learning about our landscapes. All right, have fun and enjoy creating your totem pole and totem pole backgrounds.